Hey everybody, this is Diane O'Brien, your executive recruiter. Um, this clip I'm going to do really quickly to all my executive recruiters out there. They're now becoming retained. Congratulations. I know there's a few of you out there. Um, I know that's a great feeling. I remember when I first had my first not only exclusive contract, but then my first retained contract, and then um, getting the larger job orders. So um, that's such an exciting time of life, and I'm glad if I can kind of help you get there. Um, one question I had, and this was from um, a recruiter that had already landed uh, his first retained contract, and I think it was now going on to getting his second or third from the same client. And he had asked me that, um, you know, you're kind of building that relationship, and I told him many times this could be his bread and butter for years. I had clients that literally, um, you know, it's kind of like almost helping put your kids through school if you're saving up for college or whatever, that they're, there's that they are your bread and butter, and you only need a few of those to do really well in life, especially in recruiting and um, uh, whether you're working for a company or if it's your own business and all the profits yours, that, that's amazing. So um, you want to really take care of those clients and go above and beyond. So one question he had was, you know, we're in a unique position as recruiters that you find out um, you're often hiring for competitors in the same field. So if you're hiring for, let's say, a VP of finance for one company, the direct competitor can call you for the same position, and they might ask you, you know, what you think for comp, or what other comparables are, and when it comes to the level of integrity, you know, what should you do there? And so um, the way I explained this for him, and he had a very specific question, I won't get in, you know, too specifics, but, you know, should I share with them what their direct competitor, now that it was another big Fortune 100 company, in fact, um, what, they're, what they do, what that looks like, the comp and the package and everything. And, you know, what I think, just almost like in real estate, when you're able to give comparables, and there's something wrong with saying what the neighbor's house sold for, um, without maybe even giving the neighbor's name, you know, I think that it's okay, generally speaking, to share information within an industry um, about what the going comp is. I know they do comp analysis sometimes at a company that actually a company paid them to do a comp analysis for them. But but even with that, that, without that, just your knowledge, there's nothing wrong with sharing it as long as you're not disclosing the actual name of the company where you're giving up something, um, especially if you sign an NDA or non-disclosure. We're not giving up any rights or any, uh, what's it called, proprietary information. So, um, as long as it's generally speaking a certain range, let's say for if it was a, <clears throat> a VP and it was 185 to 200, you want to give out the salary range for you know people usually in that area, or packages for his bonus or what percentage per year. Um, I think that's fine to do, but just never give specifics. I think it's very easy. I know recruiters do this, but I think it comes back to bite them where they can say, you know, hey, so and so. Let's say it was like you know Comcast and Verizon. If it was recruiter recruiting for those companies, that this is what Comcast just did for their VP and and you're hiring for Verizon, well, I think just like, again, in personal life and relationships, where if you're speaking behind someone else's back, the friend you're talking to is going to think that you're speaking behind their back. And and I find that to be true, and, and I think you just never want to say anything on the phone or to that client that if the other client was on the phone with you, that you'd be embarrassed to say. So it's always a good um, kind of caliber is to kind of catch yourself. I know we all make mistakes sometimes, and you want to help a client, and you might give too much information, but be very careful not to do so, because it will, it will bite you. So... Um, that's it. Just want to give a quick clip on that, and uh, I'll speak more to those kind of questions later on.